Welcome to Burgess Power Hour. We are now talking about today and tonight telling our truth, okay, that I have a voice, telling our truth. So tonight is all about telling our truth and having a voice. And last month, we talked a little bit about having a voice and having the essence of communication, Uh, but tonight we're going to go into it a little bit further, and uh, hopefully um, those of you who have been on the call before, you know what I do with experiential stuff, meaning that um, I'm going to talk a little bit, and then I would love for you to get a pen and paper out, and if you're driving, don't do that, but uh, you will get a recording, um, and you can go back and do this on your own so if you actually did register you'll get a recording so if you have background noise go ahead and hit star six and that will mute you or you can just mute your phone if you have a cell phone so you can hit star six and then when you want to talk again because i will ask for people to share um, some things that are coming up for them when we do our experiential part, um, and you can hit star six again, and that will bring you back into the call. So uh, I'm going to leave it on. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to mute everybody, but if I hear a lot of background noise, I'll, I'll start muting people. I'll, I'll mute everybody, okay? But for now, I'll leave it open, and I welcome you to the call, and get your pen and paper ready because tonight's going to be chocked full of all kinds of cool stuff about having a voice. So, so let's start with everybody. <laughs> people might think you're crazy, but just say it out loud. I have a voice. I have a voice. I have a voice. (laughs) Awesome. And those voices mean something, okay? So a lot of people may, maybe in your past, you've been told to shut up, or maybe you've been misunderstood. Yep. Or uh, maybe you have not spoken up before. Maybe when you have spoken up uh, in your household or in your school or at work, you were reprimanded. Or maybe you felt judged, or you maybe you felt you got maybe you got in trouble for speaking up, and so a lot of times if you get in trouble, you learn not to speak up and not to tell your truth and not to and to basically you know just be mindful of not saying anything and going in hiding and not having a voice and sometimes people misunderstand you or maybe you misunderstand them. And a lot of times people will be afraid because of the reprimand or being judged. So just kind of notice, do you feel misunderstood when you're telling your truth or when you speak up? Or do you want, or do you misunderstand other people sometimes? So in our discussions last month and certainly in our uh, module that we've had of Essence of Communication, that's what we've been doing for the last nine weeks in our Conscious Leadership Academy here at Essence of Being, uh, we're about to go into the Essence of Leadership. So this will be our last Power Hour call about communication, but I wanted to make sure we delved in a little further. So... The other thing is, ask yourself these questions first, and then I'm going to give you some information, and then we'll go in and look at your subconscious beliefs around having a voice and what do you do. I'm going to give you some tools that you can use, okay? So, again, if you have background noise, hit star six or mute yourself so that I don't have to mute all of you, okay? And, again, when you want to talk, all you have to do is hit star six again and would love to hear a couple of shares from you when we get going here, okay? So one of the things I want to say is ask yourself these questions. Do I have a fear of speaking up? Do I have a fear of being heard? And just ask yourself that and just answer yes or no. Um, do you have a fear of being misunderstood or have you had evidence in your life that you're misunderstood? Or do you understand people, do, do they understand you when you speak up? Do you, or do you think you have trouble, people just misunderstand you? Or do you under, misunderstand other people? It goes both ways, right? It's a two-way communication. So what response do you get most of the time when you request something? 
So ask yourself that. What kind of response do I get when I ask for something? Or do I even ask for anything? Maybe you're one of those people that don't even want to ask or speak up. And do you feel comfortable speaking in groups? Yes or no? And do you feel comfortable one-on-one? Yes or no? <clears throat> and do you think that people people, <laughs> excuse me, even listen to you when you speak? Do you feel like you have to maybe sh- shout over them or maybe you don't shout over them, but you maybe you just don't speak because they just don't listen to you. Maybe you just give up. So just ask yourself these questions if any of this resonates with you or you've had these experiences before or maybe you're one of those people that steamroll people. You tell your truth, but you don't do it with compassion. Maybe you do speak up and maybe you're the bully or maybe you were bullied in school or bullied at work or bullied at home and it's a learned behavior. Okay, so the thing about telling your truth and having a voice is just remembering that you have the right to speak. You do. You have the right to speak. And because of the evidence that we've had through all of our lives, sometimes we forget that. So I'm going to give you some distinctions first around telling your truth and giving advice and telling your story, because I talked a little bit about that in another power call about advice, truth, and story, but let me kind of give you a distinction. When you are telling your truth and when you're talking to people and speaking up, because sometimes what we do, especially if we're a great problem solver, we really, really want to help people, you know, we want to suggest things. So what happens is you don't have to hear more than a few sentences, right, before you begin searching for the right advice. So sometimes when you're cooking up all these suggestions and convincing somebody, just try it, you may miss what that other person is trying to tell you. And that might be happening to you as well. People give you advice and you didn't ask for it. So what happens in that moment is you don't really hear each other. You didn't really hear them if you're trying to give them advice right away. Perhaps. Okay, so you may not have heard their feelings about what they're really saying and you didn't acknowledge the person's pain. You just went into fix it mode. Let me fix it for you. Or maybe people do that to you. So if you do that, if you give advice to people and you think that's telling your truth, I mean, it may be your truth at the moment, but just I want to give you these three distinctions so that you're aware of them that if you do that, that person that you're talking to will feel basically alone because you didn't actually listen and just be there. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody because I'm hearing background noise, okay? And so you can unmute yourself whenever you want to speak. All you have to do is hit star six, all right? So we call that trying to give advice to people. Um, Basically, you're... You're an advisor. Just notice when you're having a conversation with people and you're trying to be an effective communicator, part of the listening is you're trying to give the advice. But they may not have asked for it, and they probably didn't ask for it, but we we so want to help them and want to fix it for them. And it doesn't necessarily make them feel heard. Or sometimes if you don't give advice, maybe you go into the story. Maybe you hear something from somebody and you go, oh, yeah, that happened to me too. Let me tell you about my story. So you go into this whole story about how you can relate to what they're going through, but we start uh, telling our story about it. Or maybe we're the person that thinks we're telling our truth, but we go into this whole story. It's this long, drawn-out process story about everything around it. Like we we tiptoe all around what's going on, but we don't get to the real feeling about how we feel. Because it's really not about the story, okay? And 
in communication, all we want to do, every single one of us, and I just got back from Africa, and I taught the kids there in a lot of the schools and the orphanages there, and they're just like us. We all want to be heard. We all want to be acknowledged. So these are little gems I'm giving you that you can use in your business and in your life and in relationships and your family. Just know that everybody wants to be heard and acknowledged just like you. So if you start going into a story when people talk to you, um, and it's all those things around it, it's not really the actual truth of the matter, that you might miss something, okay? So what I mean by telling your truth and that you have a voice is you allow that person, or maybe you're the person, to tell your truth, which is your feeling. I feel. This is how I feel. So instead of trying to fix somebody or going to a story, just listen to that person and let them tell them your truth, their truth. And you can do the same thing. You can tell them your truth. Now, I'm going to go into some really great tools on how to do that a little bit later on after we go through these processes together. But I just wanted to give you the distinctions between advice, truth, and story. Okay? So people, like I said, really, do they do they want to be comforted? Do they want to be acknowledged? Do they want to be heard? And just think about yourself. What do you want? When you have a voice, what do you want from other people? Do you want to be heard, acknowledged, comforted? What is it? And then ask yourself this question. Would you rather listen to somebody who's interested or interesting? So, again, ask yourself, when you're telling your truth, and you're listening to another person at the same time when you're having these conversations, ask yourself, am I interested or am I interesting? Now, interest, I'll tell you the the correct answer, if you will, (laughs) or a really good answer is the more interested you are in another person, the more they will share with you and the more they'll trust you. And the more they will, you're enrolling them into the conversations so that you don't feel like you're either judging them or reprimanding them or uh, steamrolling them. You're actually listening. And in my call last month, we talked about how to be an effective listener and how to be an effective communicator. And listening is a key element. And that means being present. So, again... Just ask yourself when you're in a conversation, am I going to be interesting today or am I going to be interested? And just watch. Watch and see what happens to that other person when you're talking to them. See if uh, that makes a difference, okay? The other thing that I want to share before we go into our little experiential stuff is that not everybody's us. So we think that everybody communicates the same way that we communicate. We also think that everybody's like little mini-me's, right? We like it this way, so they should like it this way. And people take on information and take on communication in in different ways. They have different ways of learning and processing information. So have you ever met somebody sometimes when they're shaking your hand and down – And they may be saying, like, down here in the South, we're very, very genteel. And they could be shaking your hand and saying, oh, darling, I just love that dress. But they could be, the energy of them could be feeling very manipulative, okay? Now, they could be trying to manipulate you by being really sweet, and you can feel that. So they're not being authentic, okay? And I'm just using that as an example, I'm not making any Southern people derogatory. I live in the South, so it's not that. But that's why it's so important to hear the tone and the body language when you're communicating your truth. And I talked about this before. 7% of communication is is written. 38% is tone. It's the tone. So if somebody's saying to you, oh, darling, I just love your dress, and you know they're just 
they really don't because you can feel that. You can feel the energy of it and their body language, that's 55%. If they're crossing their arms and looking the other way and they're saying, I love that dress, you know that it's incongruent. Their body language is incongruent with what they're saying. And I'll tell you now that body language is the number one way to express your truth. People feel that. They get the energy of that. So what I always say is, hey, pick up the phone and get the tone. At least you can get tone. But if you keep texting and you keep emailing and Facebooking and all those things that we do now, it's only 7%. No wonder everybody gets misunderstood. And I know I've been so misunderstood before with just a text. They don't hear the tone. They don't see my body language. So I talked about that before, but I just want to remind us that that can be incongruent. And that's not really telling our truth. And so that little person I was telling you about that was saying, looking the other way and crossing her arms and saying, oh, I love your dress, honey. That We call that being sweet but covertly hostile. And you may know people like that. Because they're incongruent with what they're saying, and they're they're not really, really telling their truth. Okay. So because a lot of times people process things differently, they also learn differently. So when you're communicating with people and you're basically using your voice, just understand that sometimes when you're telling your truth, sometimes people get communication kinesthetically, meaning they have to touch it. They have to learn or understand things by doing it themselves. They have to put their hands on it. So if you're trying to teach somebody or share something with somebody and they're just not getting it, maybe they don't learn by you just telling them that way, just auditory. And this is true so many times in business. We think, hey, I already told you that. Why didn't you do it? So it's sort of like I'll give you an example. Um, if you're in, a, if you're using a GPS, if you're trying to tell somebody how to get somewhere and you're giving somebody directions, okay? Some people get it if you tell them the directions. That's auditory. Some people have to see the directions. They have to see them on the GPS, okay? Or they have to see them written down. They're visual, or they have to see a map because they're visual. And then kinesthetic, they like to have the GPS so they can watch it as it's going and hold it, and and it tells it tells them and why they can actually uh, hold it. And if you drive there once, then you got it right because it's a cell memory because they're kinesthetic and they're learning. So again, some people learn or they get communication by show and tell. They have to be shown first before they're told. So it doesn't mean that those people aren't good listeners. If you're trying to tell your truth and have a voice and you don't feel listened to, maybe you shake it up a little bit. Maybe you just don't do it just don't do it with an auditory. It's just that when you're communicating with them and maybe you're you're trying to show them something, teach them something, but maybe they don't hear the words, they're better learners by doing it themselves. That could be kinesthetic. So some people learn by auditory, they really get it. So they can get it just by you telling them, and they hear you, and they listen, and they get it that way. Auditory people love voice navigation instead of having to look at the map or the GPS. So if you're auditory, and if you're talking to somebody who's auditory, you don't have to show graphs for them to understand, right? They get it by listening. Some people are visual. you got to show them the graph. They just have to see it. And that's my husband. If I try to tell him something, I have to show him on paper, written down, so I feel heard or he gets it and he understands it. And they have to read it sometimes before it makes sense. So I know it's hard to believe, but everybody is different. You know, they have a different way of learning, and that's also true about our children. They're not many me's. So if you can understand that, uh, that you, this will help you in your communication when you do speak up and have a voice. 
And the essence of communication about how to comprehend and retain information is in how you learn and how you share things. So just know that everybody's different. And I'm going to, again, I'll be giving you a tool on how to tell your truth. But to, to go on this a little further, I haven't spoken about this in my power calls before, I don't think. But this is a really cool concept called getting gotten. And this is really going to help, I hope, a lot of you out there when you're trying to tell your truth um, and speaking up. And then we'll go to your beliefs. We're going to have you jot down some uh, beliefs about all of this. But let me explain getting gotten. And this is going to help you in every relationship, in every way possible. This is like a little secret, okay? And this is what I teach my trainers when we're teaching an essence of being on how to get people. But if you can learn this skill and just practice it, just watch how effective it is that you really feel that people can trust you, they'll feel that they can trust you, that you can trust them, and that they'll feel acknowledged and heard. So it's a great way also to resolve conflict that I talked about before as well. So how you do it is you you look for the need behind the person's position or what they're saying. In other words, what you're doing is you're going to get them. I'm going to give you a really great example of getting gotten. So you want to get them just like you want people to get you. So if you're having to make a speech, let's say in front of a group of people, or even if you're just talking to one person, it's really powerful to get them. To have them feel like they've been acknowledged and that you understand them. So let's say when someone, I'll give you an example, when someone's upset, let's say, and they throw an attack at you or an accusation at you, there are several responses that you can take. You can attack back, which some of us do, and that's telling our truth, isn't it? But it's not with compassion. Some of us don't. We don't attack back, okay? Uh, You could ignore it completely and just walk away. Well, that doesn't work. As we all know, if you're in an argument and you just walk away, I mean, the argument really doesn't walk away, does it? It keeps rearing its ugly head, especially in relationships and personal relationships. Because it keeps following us around, it's going to come up again. Or one thing we could do is just change the subject. And as I said before, that doesn't work either because a person that's really upset, it, they don't feel gotten if you change the subject. You're like, that's nice. Let me look over here. So they feel totally dismissed. So number four, the best way is just put out the fire. Put out that upset. So I would highly consider doing number four, putting out the fire. So it's not that you can't do those other three. You can't attack, ignore, or change it, but it depends on the situation, right? And it depends if you're speaking in front of a group or if you're in a business meeting or if you're at a family reunion or if you're with friends or if you're just by yourself with your partner. But putting out the fire is the most elegant and has the longest term positive effect for both the attacker and the attacked. So an attack is usually built up on top of an emotional upset. So any negative conflict that you may have or that you've ever seen or ever been a part of has at its core an emotional charge. So what the attacker may be saying the problem is or the issue is is rarely the real issue. It's a camouflage to the real feelings underneath. Even if you offer a plausible and a reasonable answer, 90% of the time it's not heard. Or if it is heard, it's not trusted. So the attacker will simply find something else to complain or be upset about. And you, you probably know those kind of people. So in a negotiation, let's say in sales, for instance, there's a rule of thumb that states when a person is in high emotion... Their intelligence is very low at that point. High need, low intelligence. Therefore, 
the solution that always works is always to root out that emotional upset behind the words. Settle it, and then and only then can you offer a solution. So I'm going to give you a real-life example. Let's say that you're in a business meeting and you're trying to sell something. And somebody says, so how do you answer to the allegation that your salespeople promise the world and purposefully mislead the customers? So at this point, you see, this person really doesn't care about the answer. They care about their upset. Now, a typical response or a reaction because there's a difference. The typical reaction to this could be from you saying, well, we have covered our basis on what our salespeople say and do, and I assure you that is a false accusation. Or you might say, uh, I know that it's happened before. We're making strides to be sure that it does not ever happen again. Okay, so that's a little more responsible, but that person who's upset is thinking, yeah, whatever, sure. Or you could have somebody say, well, we cannot control what's at what everybody says. We can't control what all, all of our people say. Now, if someone says that, that's just a complete justification, right? And the attacker could care less. So that person is just justifying all over the place. So the attacker has not been heard. So to attempt to defend the charge when the person has an upset in their voice, you can tell, would be to dig a deeper hole. Because understand that at, at the core to all human beings is a need to be heard and acknowledged. So what you might want to say in that situation is this. So let's say the attacker says, hey, how do you answer to the allegation that your salespeople promise the world and purposefully mislead the customers? So you could come back with, well, have you had this type of thing happen to you before? You bet I have, and from your people. And then you could say, I would imagine that's very upsetting to you. So see, what I did just there is I acknowledged the upset, not the issue around the people. I said to the person, I'd imagine it's very upsetting to you. So the person can say to the attacker, not only upsetting, but I had to answer to my superiors, and it made me look like a fool. Okay, now, now you've got them spilling their true upset. They felt like a fool. So by asking them a question and saying things like, I can only imagine, or saying, I would imagine that that's very upsetting to you, you're basically calling You're going behind the words and you're going to the feeling place and you're calling it out loud. And now you know they think they were made to be like a fool. So you've discovered by what he just said that they they were embarrassed. That's part of their upset, that they were embarrassed. So you could say back to them, so the encounter that you had was not only upsetting but embarrassing, right? You actually tell them. You, you, you could say, obviously, you are embarrassed. And the attacker can say, yeah, that's right. Because what happens is now they're getting acknowledged and heard. Notice that they can get a little bit quieter, too. It kind of dissipates the upset. It's been relieved a little bit because they feel heard. And this is a result of you listening and caring. This is exactly where... You want them because now they can hear you. If you try to talk to somebody and tell your truth when they're upset with you, it may or may not get anywhere. So you would say something like, I want you to understand that it has never been the intention of our team to upset you or to embarrass you. Now, you've got to tell them that from a sincere place. Okay? So you've got to tell that to them from the heart. So if you say, I want you to understand it's never been the intention of our team to upset you or to embarrass you, and the attacker can then say, yeah, I don't suppose that you would. And then you could say, well, if we have caused you upset or embarrassment, I really do apologize. That was never our intention. Our intention is for you to be a hero because that is in both of our interests. 
So, in other words, you can apologize only if it's appropriate. And they may be upset about something that has little to do with you. And most of the time, it probably doesn't. It's a trigger. But just hearing it and acknowledging it can be just enough. And then you thank them. Thank you for your willingness to tell me your truth and to speak your mind. So what just happened is you moved through that emotional upset. It's been dumped. You've not only cooled the fire from the person, but you've also re-enrolled them onto your side enough for them to hear you. So if you're in a business meeting or in a personal relationship, you've re-enrolled them back into listening to you. So that's putting out the fire. That's getting gotten. And this is a very, very, very high-level conscious way of communication. It takes practice to acknowledge this, okay? It really takes practice to find the upset behind the attack. So just remember, acknowledge, personalize it, and enroll. So you acknowledge them, and you personalize it by saying, I bet that really feels like, or I bet other people have felt that before, Or I can only imagine how that feels. And then you enroll them back into your conversation so that they won't yell at you anymore. Okay? So that's getting gotten. And that's, I mean, there's so much about this I could go into. I'd do a whole day on this. But I just wanted to give you that little tidbit on how to really have communication with someone and really get to the core of what they're feeling. So... With that, let's go in and find out a couple of things about your beliefs around telling your truth and communication, and then I'm going to give you some tools to use, okay? So first of all, um, write this is stream of consciousness writing, and what that means is I give you a sentence and you finish the sentence without thinking about it, without editing it, without trying to figure it out. You write the first things that come up. When my mom communicated to me when she was angry, I would, what? When my mom or my female caregiver communicated to me when she was angry, I would, what? Just jot down the first thing. And the next one is, you guessed it, when my dad communicated to me when when he was angry, I would, what? When my dad or my male caregiver communicated to me when he was angry, I would, Just write down the first thing that comes up. The next one is, when I was angry at my dad, I would, what would you do? When I was angry at my dad, I would, And the next one is, when I was angry at my mom, I would, when I was angry at my mom, I would, what? And the last one? is when when I am angry with my partner, so whatever partner you've had in the past or if you have a partner now, when I'm angry with my partner, I... I what? When I'm angry with my partner, when I, when I had a partner, I what? How do you show your anger?
Okay. So just look at what you wrote down and see if there are any patterns there. See if you're repeating some of the same patterns that you learned as a child or long ago. And ask yourself, did I did I run? Was it fight, flight, or freeze? That's our reptilian brain. We either fight or we either run, which is flight, or we freeze, which was we don't say anything. So Anybody find any pattern they want to share? You can hit star six. Or anybody want to share anything before I move on? You hit star six, and I can work with you on that. Uh, Hi, it's John Ann. Hi, John Ann. Hi, hi. So it's just really, really um, insightful and perceptive and all <laughs> it's all there. I did want to ask you um, where you got the uh, 7 38, 52 or 55? 7% 38 and 55. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it, well, it's from a, and I cannot remember the name because it's this really long name, the person that came right. up with this. Uh, but right. I bet if you Googled it, it would come up and I never can remember but it's a, it's um um, it was studied back in the day, right? And this is what they came up mm-hmm. with. And I should know the mm-hmm. name of it, but it's it's called something. It's an actual <laughs> call. It's I called something. Right. Yeah, Pardon? It comes from somewhere. It, yeah, it's, it's called, it, uh-huh. All this work is so helpful, and, but that particular thing, I've mentioned it to a few people since the last time uh, you shared it a month ago, and um, it's fabulous, the responses from it. Oh, great! That's great. Yeah, yeah I really cannot helpful. remember the name. Somebody can Google it and tell me, but it's so, it's a method or it's a something that somebody came up with uh, that they For did sure. all these studies sure. on it. Um, right. And it's a long name, like it's not draconian or something. I don't remember the name <laughs> of it, but it's some kind of a a method. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate thank that. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share anything? Any um, beliefs that came up? or ahas, or any patterns, or any questions before I move on. And all you have to do is hit star six. Really? Okay. Normally I have like everybody just clamoring to talk, but okay. Um, So... Hey, Bert. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good. Um, I I kind of have a hard time recalling exactly how I acted as a child when either my parents were angry at me, but my I think my intuition is probably pretty right on, and um, I I would say that I probably would usually kind of withdrawal and be remorseful and just even very upset, maybe upset with myself when my mother was mad at me. Uh Uh-huh. And when my dad was mad with me, I think that I would generally be also remorseful but more defensive and maybe ranting not to him but in private. (laughs) And... So in both of those, so in both of those, what I'm hearing is that there's a hiding, that there's a shame that comes up, thinking that you internalize it, you internalize it, saying it's your fault, or somehow you go into shame about it and then hide, or either flight, meaning you run, you know, you run and not want to confront, or you'd want to fight your dad but not really confront him, uh, but you still go into shame. Is that true? Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty accurate. And um And how's that show up pretty, for you now? 
potent exercise because in my relationship uh, right now is there's a lot of there's a lot of anger towards each other at times and and um, and I find myself primarily uh, in doing both behaviors um, I will shut down and really go into deep remorse and a lot of negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, my partner is angry with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will also find myself getting very defensive. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and usually if I get to that point where my own anger comes up, then I'm, I'm storming out, I'm ending things, and I just can't Right. I can't go right. on anything. Right, right. So that's perfect in that great explanation and great, very good insight. And, you know, I have a class called Essence of Communication and Essence of Relationships. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I, know. I know. So so this is great because if you're, if you're, number one, if you're aware of it and you're present to it, okay, then you, there's a way to, um, I can give you a tool that you can use called a pattern interrupt that you may or may not have heard me talk about before. Uh, but going to running, running and hiding, and then shaming yourself for it, and then either fighting back or free or running and just hiding and saying forget it. You know, neither one of those really is telling your truth with compassion, and it certainly uh, those are all triggers from from your past, right? So that so all you need at this point is some tools to deal with understanding when it does come up and being present to the fact that it's coming up for you to heal. So as you know, this is hands, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I figured. I I knew your voice. So <laughs> that's great. So what I was going to say though is as you know as an essence of being graduate um, that everything unlike love comes up for the purpose of healing when there's a lot of love present. Whenever you're in a relationship or there's any kind of love in a family present, everything unlike love gets pushed up for the purpose of healing it. So just know that if you're getting into arguments, if you're getting into, and this is for everybody on the call, if you're getting into any kind of um, battles like that and arguments, it's coming up to heal something. There's things that are being triggered for you to heal it. So you have choices. You can either heal it or not. And it's going to keep coming up no matter who you're with, no matter what you do. Because guess what? Wherever you go, there you are. Okay? And if you believe that you are a creative, conscious creator, you are thought creates reality, and that you have the ability to take responsibility for your thoughts and your actions and your beliefs, then you can shift that bubble talk. And those of you who have taken Essence of Being, you know the bubble talk is that subconscious thought that keeps you from getting what you want. It's that little head, that little bubble above your head in a cartoon character. And those are the ones that are running you. So my tool for that, if you have those arguments like that, if you feel yourself getting to that point where uh, you get activated and you get triggered with any any kind of um, charge, if there's an emotional charge that, that kind of grows, uh, instead of walking away or instead of fighting, one thing you could do is a pattern interrupt. And how you do that is you have to come up with a word or a phrase ahead of time, and you do it ahead of time. You can't, it doesn't work if you do it in the moment. But you come up with a word or a phrase ahead of time and say, this is going to be our pattern interrupt word or phrase. And whatever it is, it has to make you laugh. So you decide as a couple or as a, you know, whoever you're doing this with, you decide as a couple, you know, what it's going to be. And it has to make you laugh. So when you feel that energy really growing and growing and it's like, oh, my God, I'm either going to shut down or I'm going to yell back because this is not get we're escalating here. One of you calls out the pattern interrupt word. And once you do that, everything stops. You both have to agree that no more communication at that point. You stop talking. You walk away. You take 10 deep breaths. And I mean 10 deep breaths. When I say walk away, that means you come back. You're not walking away. You're not storming out. 
You're going to your corners. You both take 10 deep breaths, and then you come back together. And when you come back together, the person who called the pattern interrupt starts first. And that person says, what I feel like saying is, and also the truth for me is. And then you just share everything that you want to share, and that other person just listens. So you have to have this agreement ahead of time. And the other person just listens. They don't interrupt you. They don't have a discussion about it. They just listen until you are finished saying whatever it is you feel like saying. So the key words are you say, what I feel like saying is, and for me the truth is. And then when you're finished, you say, what do you feel like saying? And then it's the other person's turn. And then you have to be quiet and just listen. And they say, well, for me the truth is, or what I feel like saying is. And you go back and forth like that. And what happens, here's the deal. The breaths, the ten breaths, that dissipates the energy, number one. You break the pattern, you interrupt the whole pattern of the escalation. So the breath will actually de-escalate the energy. When you come back together, then you're going to be able to hear each other actively listening to each other and acknowledging so that both of you will feel heard of whatever the point is. And again, you want to use I statements. You want to go to the getting gotten place. Those are really great tools, and that's one of the biggest tools I wanted to share with all of you is to tell your truth with compassion is to say, for me the truth is. Because people cannot argue that, no matter what you say. They may disagree with what you're saying, but they cannot argue that that's not your truth. And that's a great way to start any kind of conversation, especially if you feel like it could get heated. And you say, for me the truth is. Okay, so by using that tool and asking clarifying questions is another tool in being an effective communicator and having a pattern interrupt. Asking Mm -hmm. clarifying questions is huge. If you're one of those people that are afraid to ask questions, first of all, did that help you on the other? Did that help you, Hans? Yeah, it does. Um, Okay. I think, that, I think that one of the challenges in that process for me would be that I still feel often, and this speaks very closely to telling your truth, is that I, I still feel that even when I say the truth for me is that my truth isn't going to be heard, and, and for that matter, it's going to kind of return to me with, criticism or contempt or right right and so now you're projecting so maybe that's been your evidence okay and it's certainly been perhaps it's been your evidence from uh youth you know and it's being so a lot of times people don't tell their truth because they project that it's going to be returned with criticism and judgment and reprimand reprimanded also some people don't tell the truth because they don't want to hurt people's feelings Okay, and so that means that they're trying to be responsible for other people's feelings. And number one, you cannot be responsible for anybody else's feelings, for anybody else's thoughts, or for anybody else's beliefs. So everybody is autonomous in that way. So if you're one of those people who are afraid to tell your truth because you're going to hurt somebody's feelings... Just remember, you're not responsible for them. You are responsible for your own thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs, and your actions. Now, if you're projecting onto that person, if I tell them my truth, then I'm going to get judged and criticized, and it's going to just come back and bite me in the butt. But if you project that onto them, then guess what? That's probably going to happen. And that certainly probably has been your evidence. So I would say... Be mindful of looking for the evidence that that won't happen. In other words, start looking for the evidence that by telling my truth, I feel heard and they feel heard. 
And if you use these tools and if you focus on that and not be afraid that it's just going to come back and bite you, because it's clearly it did. You went into shame and you went into flight and you went into fight when you were younger. It just plays out over and over and over again. And so there are tools that you can use, but you both have to agree. And if you're conscious, if you're in a conscious relationship, then it's easier to have these kinds of conversations to have them agree, to to work the principles and to work the, the tools and play with these tools that I'm giving you. Okay, so if there's more to it, I certainly can support you guys uh, uh, offline on another, uh, you know, because I do private sessions. And, of course, hey, come take Essence of Communication and Essence of Relationships. And remember, we're doing our Conscious Leadership Academy, which has all of that in there. Okay, but I I hope that that helps a little bit. So just uh, adapt that and remember that, uh, even though you're afraid that it might not work. Okay. So does that are you cool with that for now? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, honey. You're welcome. So the other piece I want to share with all of you here is when you say for me the truth is, um again, that's telling your truth and that's gonna stop a lot of people from really saying they can't say back to you no that's not your truth and you're also demonstrating to them how to have a conversation you're demonstrating to them to say and to ask them well what is your truth what do you believe so if you start out saying for me the truth is this then they you can say to them what is your truth now you don't have to agree But it's a whole different vibration. It's a whole different thing than just yelling at each other or just, you know, throwing up on each other. And certainly telling your truth with compassion is the key. And in order to have compassion, you have to have empathy for the other person and be willing to come to a resolution. And that's part of our whole essence of communication, those four steps that I've talked about before. And if you've never heard them, the four steps are be present, take responsibility for your own communications, create synergy, which means you have to have empathy, put yourself in their shoes, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and be committed to resolution when you create synergy together, you're committing to a resolution together. And the fourth way of having effective communication is what we're talking about, telling your truth with compassion. And what I was saying earlier about if you take responsibility for your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions, and your feelings, um, those of you who are afraid to um, speak up, Uh, Ask clarifying questions. And what I mean by that is saying, ask, if you're you're afraid to ask a question because you're going to feel stupid or dumb or they don't understand, you know, they're going to think I'm whatever, okay, you start making up judgments about yourself, just say to the person, I have a clarifying question. And that puts the responsibility on the speaker that puts the responsibility on the person who is saying something that means that they were not clear so it gets you off the hook so next time you feel like you misunderstand something just say excuse me i have a clarifying question and if you say it that way it's a totally different energy and a totally different feel and it puts back that responsibility on the person who just said something to be more clear because you're saying to them you weren't clear and that makes a big difference when you ask questions like that and just say it exactly like that I have a clarifying question it works really really well first this is Moana hi Moana hey I got a question about that sure Um, I have a clarifying question (laughs) I love it Um, so what do you do or how how would you recommend to best respond 
when you do take that approach, um, and I and I'm looking at this especially like in in a working type relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Where the individual actually gets offended because you are asking the question, and they and the tone is, "What didn't you understand?" You know, it's almost a biting tone that you get back, and you're thinking, um, "Exactly, I'm just not clear." Well, so. Exactly. Well, do you say to them, "I have a clarifying question." I'll I'll say typically I don't I I don't understand because you please yeah, help me exactly. understand. Exactly. Now here's this is going to be the fun part. This is going to be a okay. game. Okay. So okay. typically that's the way that most people do ask. I didn't understand. You know, can you say that again or those kinds of things? And of course, that triggers something. Okay, within that other person. But if you say to them, and I promise you, you're going to get a different response 90% of the time. If you say, okay. excuse me, I have a clarifying question. And if you say it just with that tone and you use those words exactly, okay, the offense is not, you're not saying necessarily you are, um, you're, you're putting it out there as a very, um, a neutral tone, and you're not saying, you know, you're a screw-up because you weren't clear. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) And that's what they're hearing. That's what they hear, and that's what they feel instead, and it's, it's the responsibility part of saying, I have a clarifying question. And it puts it in a in a neutral tone, and it puts it in a way that they can say, oh, I wasn't clear, let me say it again. Or maybe let me say it a different way instead mm. of you being very direct. Because sometimes some people are very direct when they ask questions or when they're talking. And other people, if they get uh, directive communication from a, from a person and they are the, their behavior and their personality does not like direct communication, it triggers them. And they don't know. And they'll either fight you or feel offensive or defend. Okay, that that makes sense. I'll. I'll try that. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Which leads me to my booby trap. So one other tool I want to give all of you is uh, just be mindful for the next month or so because uh, the next time I won't, I won't talk to you, unless you guys come to Essence of Being this weekend, of course. We are doing our next Essence of Being, which I've been doing for 26 years now, right? So this weekend we're doing it here in Atlanta, and we have one more Essence of Being in September, September 27th through the 29th. Um, and go to our site, essenceofbeing.com, and check out the Conscious Leadership Academy. And we just launched it in Tanzania. I just got back from there. We have it in Liberia, and we're having it all around uh, the world. You can be part of this global movement of conscious leaders empowering others to create a win-win world, and that's what we're about. And we're doing our Essence of Leadership coming up in September as well. But go to essenceofbeing.com slash C-L-A, which stands for Conscious Leadership Academy. And that way you can kind of look at it, see what's involved, check out a lot of our freebies. You get a free uh, abundance class. It's, it's very cool. But before I go, I wanted to let you know that because the next time we meet will be in um, August because I, I do these power hours the third Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. And uh, we're going to be talking about purpose, purpose why am i here so i know many of you may have that question but i'm going to give you a couple things to think about between now and then if i don't see you at my essence of being coming up or the essence of leadership or any of our other conscious leadership academy classes and it's online and it's live think about these booby traps okay so telling your truth and speaking up and having a voice just kind of be mindful that Sometimes, here, listen to yourself, if I have a booby trap. And these are sayings that make up some of our subconscious beliefs that continuously create our reality. So becoming aware of what we say and the effects they have in our lives, well, it really will assist us in eliminating them from our speech patterns. So... Think about these kind of things. I'm just going to throw out some and just be mindful. You'll probably have your own, but here are some that people say a lot. And when you say them, hear yourself saying them and just say the words until recently. 
okay, or cancel clear or something like that and just say until recently I felt this way or until recently I thought this because, again, that's a pattern interrupt. So if you say to yourself, I'm sick and tired, that's a booby trap. Everything I eat turns to fat, that's a booby trap. I hate my body. I'm starving. I'm starving. I can't remember. I'm losing my mind. Ah, oh, poor baby. What's the use? I am so dead tired. My back is killing me. I'm getting too old to do this. I can't afford that. So I'm saying some, I'm say a few more. I'm just saying these as examples. And just notice how the energy and the vibration of those things, if you keep saying that over and over and over again, those are negative booby traps that, that you're continually focusing on. But it's all subconscious because we all do it. So I'm asking you, to, I'm challenging you this, this month to really notice. If you say things like, uh, I can't afford that. Or if I don't do it, who will? Or, I have no choice. No pain, no gain. Or, that always happens to me. Or, one of my favorites is, I don't know. So, you can change those, by the way, to something like, if you say, I don't know all the time, change it to, I choose to know. I choose to know. I choose to know what it is I'm trying to think of. So that puts it into a totally different positive communication line instead of I don't know. And my favorite is I'll try. Because as one of our wise sages have said, there is no try, there is only do or not do. And that is in Star Wars and and I choose to remember his name. I'm having a brain. I'm, I'm choosing it's to. Yoda. Not, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. There is no. There is no try. There is only do or not do. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. And uh, we're at our hour, so I just wanted to say uh, hopefully all of you got something out of this and uh, watch out for your booby traps in the next month. And, of course, join me next month in August for our next Power Hour. And uh, I would love to see all of you at Essence of Being this weekend or September 27th through the 29th. And please, oh, please, oh, please, we are going to be doing our Higher Vibes classes uh, in October. Go check out our schedule of events on Essence of Being. Being.com. And, and, and I'll be down in Florida for that one and Atlanta. Hey, I'm coming back to Florida. And. Yay, Florida! <laughs> and. Yes. Yay, Florida! <laughs> and I, I really, really, back. really want, want you guys to join us in our Conscious Leadership Academy because it has been phenomenal for people that have been. And you can join anytime, but just jump in and play with us because. Um, it's a year-long membership that we're all connecting uh, the entire year together, learning all of these things on an ongoing basis. So without further ado, uh, just say one more time, I have a voice. I have a voice. I have a voice. And I'm going to use it. <laughs> and I'm going to use it. There you go. I love you, Mary. <laughs> and remember my just say for me the truth is and tell your truth with compassion everybody and so i don't like to say goodbye we'll just say until next time see you soon everybody until next okay. time see you soon. Thank Thank you. You. Bye. bye everybody see you bye. soon bye, bye you're welcome you're welcome <laughs>